Okay, so we're going to talk about gradient boosting. Um, so this differs from boosting in um, the fact that we're going to, instead of fit a decision tree to the data itself, to augmented data, we're going to, uh, with, with weights, we're going to fit it to what's known as pseudo-residuals. And the basic motivation for this is uh, we want to fit a given loss, and we're not necessarily focused on misclassification error for, um, for classification as, as much as we want to focus on a loss. And this can make boosting a lot more flexible because now our loss could be, for example, um, the loss from a, for an M estimator, like a negative log likelihood for a given model. So that's, uh, that's sort of the, um, the way that we're going to think about gradient boosting. <clears throat> so this is, um, so we uh, want to fit to a loss L um, where this is, uh, but we want to use regression trees. Okay, so the algorithm, I'll just present it first. Um, so for the algorithm, let's just start with F0 of X is equal to the, um, so this is a bit weird, but it's just going to be uh, estimating everything to have the same all the predictions to have the same value. So our loss of yi times gamma. So for example, if this is hinge loss, then we're just going to select the gamma that minimizes the overall hinge loss. And gamma is just a constant, so this is an r. Right? It's just a scalar, sorry, not a constant. It's just a scalar, so it's just an r. Um, and then for b, going from 1 up to capital B, let's do the following. Set... Um, First of all, we're going to compute what's known as pseudo-residuals. Pseudo so this is y tilde bi, which is equal to minus partial L over partial gamma. So this would be subgradients if or subdifferentials if we had um, if we uh, had a, a loss with a uh, discontinuous derivative, and this is equal to f sub b of xi. So this is evaluated at the prediction. So the gradient of the loss minus the gradient of the loss evaluated at the prediction uh, for all i. So for each data point, we calculate this pseudo-residual. And the basic idea of this is that if I want to reduce my loss, I would, um, I would move uh, in the direction of this negative gradient. Right? Okay, so these are pseudo-residuals. That's what we're going to call them. Residuals. Okay. Next thing, um, we have our regions. So we're going to use our decision tree to construct regions. Um, yeah, let's use some not curly L. Sciota, I guess, to capital L. Um, so we're going to use decision trees, but we're going to use it as if the pseudo-residuals were our, and these are regression decision trees, so using square error loss um, for the decision tree, using our pseudo-residuals, B, I, um, X, I, I going from 1 to N, as if the pseudo-residuals were our predictions themselves. And then um, for this, we, ha we have to also specify a number of leaves. Um, and there, we typically will choose it to be uh, relatively short, like a stump. Or we could choose it to be um, just some controlled number, number of leaves. Or we can choose the depth. We could either control it via the number of leaves or the depth. Okay. Um, and then once we have these regions for the decision tree, we're not necessarily just going to use the levels that the decision tree spits out, but we're going to fit, um, after the fact, these levels. So, um, this gamma B, um, iota, this is going to be the argmen over selection of gamma. This is just a, just a scalar of the sum over i, such that xi lives within this region, r, b, 
iota here, times this loss of yi and f sub b minus 1 of xi plus gamma. So we're going to think of ourselves as starting at, as, at the previous f, so the previous prediction uh, or output, and then we're going to move uh, by gamma, where gamma is just the thing that minimizes the overall loss, but we're going to uh, fit only things that are uh, constant within or within one of these regions uh, for the decision tree. And so we're really just fitting a single gamma. Okay, and then finally, the way we combine this um, to produce a classifier here, this is equal to f b minus 1 of x plus gamma times the sum over iota going from 1 to capital L, just all of the um, all the different uh, leaves, b iota indicator that x is in r b iota. Okay, so what does this mean? So we're just going to take a given x, and we're going to see what regions does it belong to for the given level b, what region does it belong to? It only belongs to one of these regions from the, that spit out from the decision tree. Um, and then, um, so for that one, we're just going to modify its prediction by adding some nu times gamma b iota. So for a given location, we're just incrementally modifying, um, sort of moving in the direction of this gamma, uh, modifying the... Um, modifying its its uh, prediction. So let's go through an example, and I think the example is, is instructive. So let's go through an example. Um, so for the example, we have this L of yi and gamma. This is our loss, and let's just say that it's hinge loss, like we're doing binary classification, and this is our hinge loss. Yep where yi, of course, is encoded as a uh, plus 1 or minus 1. Right? It's a sine vector, or the y is a sine vector. Okay, so the gradient is the subgradient. Um, so we're going to use an element of the subdifferential of yi and gamma, and we'll use the one we usually use, um, the subgradient, which is minus yi, times the indicator that 1 exceeds yi times gamma. You should verify that this is, or know, that this is a subgradient of the hinge loss. Um, and so we can just write this as um, minus y tilde uh, bi for a given gamma. Right. So our pseudo residuals are going to be set to be these, right? because it's minus the subgradient. So in general, if we have a certain iteration, we have a given gamma level uh, prediction, then that's going to be, uh, this is going to be our pseudo residual. We're just effectively seeing if it's on the wrong side of the margin. If it is on the wrong side of the margin, then uh, we set y tilde to be equal to y, and otherwise it's just zero. y tilde is zero. Right. So that's one observation about what these pseudo residuals are going to look like. They're just going to be the labels, or they're going to get zeroed out if you were correct enough. Okay, great. So, um, so let's just start by, um, yeah, so let's, let's start by um, just thinking about what happens when we do our first round in this uh, uh, gradient uh, tree boosting. So here we have just some fake data set. So let's start with our axes. And to make it easier to see, let's use blue and red. So we have some pluses here. And we'll have some minuses over here. Yeah, if it's got a proper minuses over here. And then um, let's let's think about um, just using stumps as our decision trees, so it just has two leaves, so just a single split. Then suppose that we make our first split down here. We apply our decision tree 
Um, our first, so first of all, our, our initial gammas are just going to be, um, because we're predicting them all to be the same value, we're using the same gamma for all of them, it's going to be some number between 0 and 1, so nothing's going to be on the correct side of the margin. And so all the pseudo residuals are just going to be exactly the yi's. So the data itself are, is going to be the pseudo residuals to start off. Right? So then we're going to apply the decision tree to the data. Now, what is the hinge loss? What does it look like? Because we're at this step, we've, uh, we've computed the pseudo residuals for the first round. It's just the data, just the yi's themselves. Uh, we apply the decision tree, which gave us a split, a given split. And now we're going to say, let's minimize the loss within each of the regions. Well, there's two regions here, the left and the right-hand side of this purple line. And so um, the, let's think about the, the overall loss. We have the sum over i of our hinge loss, 1 minus yi times gamma, positive part, for uh, xi within a region. So we'll do xi within, say, r1, if this is r1 over here and this is r2. Okay, well that's equal to um, that's equal to uh, n. We'll call it n one plus. So this is the number such that y i. This is the number of y i equaling one for x i within R one, right? The size of the set. Um, so that's n one plus, and then the loss itself. 1 minus gamma, positive part, plus n1 minus, which is the same thing except for the minus ones, of 1 plus gamma, positive part. So that's just what our losses are going to be, the, our overall loss for that region. And we're, if we jump back, we are minim finding the gamma that minimizes the sum of the losses within the region uh, for, the, for the gamma that we're going to choose. Right. So let's think about this gamma. Um, what would be the minimizer of this? Well, let's think about this function as a function of gamma. And let's just suppose n1 plus exceeds n1 minus. Then um, on one level, if you set gamma to be uh, minus 1, then you would have a 2 here. So you have this is a function that at minus 1, it evaluates to 2 2 n1 plus um, but then it also uh, the n1 minus gets a negative uh, a zero right because 1 minus minus 1 is 0 so this is just 2 n1 plus here right I'm sorry it's 2 n1 plus at this at this value um, n1 minus, uh, so we can, if we look at what uh, this function, as a function of gamma here, what this is at, at gamma equals 1, then we get a 2 for, the, for this term, and we get a 0 for this term, and so we get 2, 2, n1 minus, right, is, is that gamma equals to 1. Now it's linear in between these two. So it's some line in between these two. And then um, when you're on, when gamma is less than minus 1, then you're going to have that this term is inside of the positive part is negative, so it's just going to get zeroed out. This term here is just going to get um, bigger and bigger. Right? Um, and so you're just going to um, increase this. Right. Now, um, now this term over, if, if you switch the roles, imagine gamma exceeding, um, imagine gamma exceeding 1. If gamma exceeds 1, then this positive part is going to get larger and larger, um, whereas this negative part is going to not change. And so you're actually going to increase here. And so this minimizer, in this case, if n1 minus is less than n1 plus, is going to be 1, right? And so that's just a majority voting rule, right? Because n1 minus 
if n1 minus is less than n1 plus, that means that in the region, there are more uh, pluses than minuses. So in general, if we just want to uh, choose a single number that minimizes this uh, sum of the um, sum of the hinge losses, that number there is going to be either one or minus one, depending on whether you have more pluses or more minuses. Right? So it's just majority vote. And so gamma is going to, um, in this case, it's going to be um, the gamma is going to be equal to or the, sorry, the, the minimizer inside of this, which is this, this thing, um, let's just call it star, because it's not exactly gamma, because gamma is added to something to minimize it, so it's, so I'll just write it star in this region, star is going to be equal to the majority vote, it's all pluses, so it's going to be equal to plus one, plus one here, and then star on this side, there's one more minus than plus, and so star is going to be equal to minus one here. Okay, so if we do this, then this is going to be our new prediction. And our new, so um, let's suppose that our, I, I don't want to deal too much with this new, so let's just suppose that it's selected such that our next prediction is just this either plus or minus one. Let's just suppose that f current currently f um, uh, of x is equal to um, indicator of x within r one minus this indicator of x within r two. Let's just assume that that's our current f. Right? Um, let's call it f one. So it's just the label here. If it's in r one. And then it's this label if it's an R2. Right? So, um, and, and I just suppose that I've strategically ch chosen this new such that that's the case. Then when we go back through, we have to recalculate our pseudo residuals, which remember, it's just Y, it's just the label Y if it's on the correct side of the, uh, if it's on the wrong side of the margin and zero otherwise. Right? Remember, that's the pseudo residuals. So when we do that, um, we're going to have that on the correct side of the margin means that the uh, yi times gamma, which is our current prediction, um, is um, is less than 1. But gamma is 1 or minus 1, and yi is 1 or minus 1. And so that's less than 1 if and only if... Um, if and only if yi is different from gamma. If yi is the same as gamma, then yi times gamma is one, right? And so, um, so that's just going to be uh, the label if you have a misclassification and not the label otherwise. And the only misclassifications here are going to be these points down here. These are the only misclassifications. So now if we draw this with the pseudo residuals, let's draw this again with the pseudo residuals, Okay, so we have all of these pluses are going to get zeroed out except for down in this lower right hand side. So we have a bunch of zeros because these are the pseudo residuals. Sorry, I'm not drawing exactly the same data. We have the these uh, the pseudo residuals are one for the misclassifications, right. and then for the minus you also have zeros. Right. And so then if we tried to learn this with a stump, we might then draw something here, right? Which would then make a prediction one here and mine and you know, whatever. It, it might be here, it could be anywhere, right? Because you have zeros on this side. Um, but it would try to um, it, it would keep these pluses in, in a group. Right? Okay, and so um, and so the interesting thing about applying this gradient tree boosting, so this is the next decision tree, and now we have a decision tree which 
um, we have two decision trees which had these two regions, which seemed which seems like a reasonable pair of splits if we want to separate this data in, um, and, and correctly classify it. The interesting thing about this is that it's like a um, very, using the hinge loss for this, it's like a very, um, uh, it's, a, it's like a data augmentation scheme that instead of, um, instead of giving you a real number of weights, it gives you these integer weights where it's either um, weighting the data by a one or, or it just zeroes out some of the correct, previously correctly classified points. So if you think about these pseudo residuals, it's either just going to be the, the current label, the label, or it's gonna zero out the label. And so it's sort of this interesting boosting scheme where it just zeroes out those which are correctly classified enough, right? Um, and so, so that's sort of the role of, um, of this gradient tree boosting. Now, it, it's pretty hard to, to understand this, um, to, to go through this example a little more faithfully by selecting this new to be um, just any arbitrary parameter that you might set, like 0.1. Um, it's harder to go through this example and see this, this effect. But you do know just that the pseudo residuals always take this form. And so, um, so it's really just going to zero out the points that are, have been correctly, cla correctly classified enough in some sense. So, um, so that's, that's a gradient, uh, gradient tree boosting. Now there's one modification, um, and that's called stochastic gradient tree boosting. And I'll just write it here. Um, so this would be here. We could subsample um, a, a mini batch. Uh, we'll call it um, S. Subsample a mini batch S from the entire data, and then um, and then apply this routine, and um, only only over the mini batch. So this would be an S, right? And that's called stochastic gradient tree boosting. And that tends to give better performance than gradient tree boosting, and it's much faster. Okay, so that is um, the extent of this, um, of what we're going to talk about with gradient tree boosting.